6.9 will be on hydroelectric power. Same goal as in all the other videos, you want to be able to describe its use and how it impacts the environment. So hydropower is the mechanical energy of flowing water being converted into electricity. We do this a few different ways. The most commonly known about is the impoundment facility. So a dam is built and that blocks the, like, the natural flow of the river. So it creates a reservoir of water. And then we can uh, use a valve uh, to control the release of that water um, and then turn it off if we don't need the release of the water or um, change how much gets through. Because what it'll do is it'll go past a turbine and same thing as before, as it spins a turbine, it'll spin the generator, fancy physics, power. There are other things like pump storage facilities. So what they can do is use energy that's um, produced in a different way. So maybe uh, through um, solar power or wind power. And they can use this energy that it creates or this electricity that it creates to pump it uphill um, in times where they don't need that much electricity. Um, and then when the electricity is needed, they can release it back downhill, then spin it past the turbine and through to the bottom reservoir um, and create the electricity again. So this is great because it allows us to use resources that are kind of unreliable and, you know, the sun just shines when it shines and the wind just blows when it blows. We can't control when these things happen. So we can kind of use that in place of a battery. So instead of like storing that electricity that creates until we need it, um, we can just use this, this like alternative way to store the energy and then release the energy later on. It's pretty cool. And there are also run of river facilities where we don't um, completely block the river which is great in certain places where blocking the river has caused a lot of environmental damage and upset the ecosystem in various ways. Uh, so what it'll do is it'll just divert some of the water downhill and then pass the turbine um, and create that electricity. Uh, it does depend on the natural flow of water, so it's not, um, not ideal for really large power loads because, you know, this is kind of unreliable, but for smaller power loads, it's okay. I also want to talk about tidal energy. It's another type of hydro power. So tidal energy uses the natural ebb and flow of the water. So as the water flows in, it'll go past a turbine. And as it flows back out, it'll go past that same turbine. And so they can spin in both directions and then cause that generator to spin and create electricity. On the one hand, hydroelectricity is very abundant. It's cheap. It doesn't produce air pollution or waste. Um, it's very flexible, especially with, you know, these impoundment facilities where we can um, control how much power is produced and so that can match the demand of whatever city we are trying to provide electricity for. Um, also, that reservoir can be used to control floods. It can provide fresh water, especially like for irrigation. It can be a source of recreation, um, so it can create money for that, for that area as well. On the other hand, construction is very expensive. It does produce carbon in the construction process. That flooding upstream impacts landscapes. And um, there have been many cases where uh, the people that live there have been displaced um, and flooded like archaeological sites and all sorts of things. Um, it causes loss in or change of the habitats, um, whether that, that's due to flooding, fish can't get, you know, hop over the dam so that changes their migration patterns. Um, also, there are species that are sensitive to the water flow. Uh, as, like, the water sits more still, we have colder water on the bottom and warmer water on the top, so that temperature difference changes. And there are uh, species that are sensitive to that. Um, it can also change, like, salinity, uh, the amount of light, turbidity, all sorts of issues that come with changing how the water naturally flows. Um, there's also the, also the possibility of dam failures, and that can lead to catastrophic floods. Um, it can lead to 
decrease of water, I forgot to put this one here, but decrease of water downstream because all that water is being held upstream that by the time that water um, would have gotten to where it would normally be, there isn't a whole lot of water left. And that could impact the people that rely on that water or animals or uh, plants, all sorts of things. The end.